All right, we're back. Luke Thomas Show, 877-FIGHT-93, 877-344-4893. Jesus. Got like a, it's like a Wu-Tang Clan up in here. It's a lot of people. And uh, why wouldn't there be? We are joined now in the studio by uh, probably my favorite guest. He comes back. He's got a bunch of stuff going on with Showtime. He's going to be at Gotham, Gotham Comedy Club this whole weekend. And a whole lot more. Big Brown is here. Brendan Schaub, everybody. What's Peace up, Shaw. brother? What's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you. It's real cock fest up in here. It is certainly yeah, is a, a ton, ton of sausage. <laughs> ton of dudes. You got the evil eye chain? Yeah. Well, to ward off the uh, the evil eyes. You just had to ice it out? You know what? The th- here's the thing, Luke. Here's the thing. I've been in LA a little too long. It's supposed to be like long. a spiritual thing, right? I know, but then you put diamonds all over it and rose gold. I'm rich, man. No, here's the thing. Uh, someone gave it to me, and uh, usually I... I I wouldn't rock this type of thing, but my my son, um, when I he got, uh, I found out he had benign epileptic seizures. Yeah, and then uh, that same week I started on CBD, and they gave me this chain, and his uh, seizures went away. So now I just wear it for him. Ah, yeah. all right. I know I look like an asshole, and people are like, come on, what he p diddy? No, it's there's a. And it's sort of like having a cross that's got like diamonds in it, it and make rubies. Sense. Yeah, yeah. It makes zero sense. Hey, look, if it works, it's like a baseball player. If it works, it works. All the superstitions they have. Yeah, is, is it my son's? It's 100 healthy now, so I'm I'm, really ro- I'm rocking this that. thing. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it, the uh, the thought was I don't know if I want to get how much you want to divulge, but Let's the thought go. was it was something he was going to live with but grow out of. Correct. But it's already it's already oh, better because CBD oil. Uh, you know they 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 wanted to give him uh, this this prescription medicine, and I I looked up all the uh, side effects from it. It's, it's not pretty, man. A lot of times it can make it worse. And then I went on a, a forum and in these in these blogs of parents whose kids struggle with the same issue, yeah. and all of them all of them were like, "Don't touch the prescriptions. Give them CBD oil." I'm like, "Well, I know guys with CBD oils." So I was like, "It's worth a shot," and then instantly. Where nothing. do you get your CBD from? And let me preface it by saying this: I've been doing a lot of reading about it. Yes. And basically Basically, what everyone I've read about and talks about says the following. There probably is something to CBD because people like you, other people I know are like, they swear by it. All the jujitsu guys I know are like, oh my God, I feel so much better with arthritis and everything. But the, it's also true that the industry is not very regulated Correct. and it's full of scammers. So let me give you my perspective. I bought some. It did nothing for I'll me. I'll send you some. Okay, I need to know what product, because I'm sure there are good products. Mm-hmm. I have no idea how to navigate the space. It's the Wild West. It's, it's the Wild West. You know, it's the same with, with, with you buy anything where it's not FDA approved. So it is the Wild West. Um, I knew a guy who, for whatever reason, is very educated on it, and he knew this company. I think it's called Global, and they're based out of L.A., and they, they run the highest kind of strictest uh, regiment through with the CBD oil. And he goes, this is the best thing you can give your son. Hmm. And the guy who, who told me to do it, he's actually my, my agent, Todd Feldman, smartest guy I know. He's been using it, and he's never steered me wrong. So since then, I, I've been on it. The all whole right. family takes it now. Oh, right on. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, welcome to New York. I'll send you some, though. Thank you, please. That yes. would make a big difference for me. Welcome to New York. I heard you were hating on it. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's not even hate. I just can't believe people live there. Like in Manhattan. Like well, it, it, Manhattan's it, the place to live. The, you just have to have money. If you don't God, have money, it's hard. It's just the traffic, man, the people. You and- know what? The tra- I used to live here, uh, what is it now, to 2018. I lived here 15 years ago. Traffic has always been bad. It's, it's way worse than it used to be. 15 years ago... It was not like this. But this is something different. This is insane. But I think if I wasn't such a pansy, I'd use the subway system. But oh, wait, wait, you took the black car here. Yeah, that's you how fucking it's loser. showtime, bro. Oh! They, they there's no black train. That's like in- <laughs> no wonder. No, you know what? The the subway is just universally faster. Like, yeah, it's well I know, but I, they don't know where they're going. I don't think so. Oh, dude, they, you have to be. You've been crawling through Manhattan crawling. in a fucking SUV. They were like, oh, you have an hour for lunch. I was like, oh, cool. I'm, I'll get a nap and I haven't got much sleep. I was like, I should get pizza up the street. I've had pizza in forever. I've been clean on my diet. And we go up to uh, Prince Street um, for yeah. pizza. Yeah, yeah. It's good and, pizza there. Yeah. Took us an hour to get there and it was four blocks. <sighs> yeah, it sucks. And then we got there like cash only, homie. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. Waited in this long ass line. Were you not at all affected by the uh, forest fires? No, I'm a, I'm a little uh, south from there. Okay. R- Rogan, uh, his neighborhood was all my boys, uh, Bert Kr- Kreischer, um, Tom Segura, all, a lot of those guys had to get out of there. So Joe had to evacuate? His house is good. He had to evacuate. He, but his house, no, he wasn't damaged. His neighbors were, both his neighbors were. Oh, His house crap. was good, though. And he Whoa. just bought a new house there, yeah. That is crazy. How crazy is that? Oh, my God. I know, man. Well, good to hear that, that things are going well. Yeah, man. Let's talk about this fight this weekend. Yes, sir. So, Wilder Fury, can I tell you? This has been, and I'm not. I know Showtime is here, and they're gonna hear me. And they're gonna be like, "Oh, you're just saying it because Showtime's here." Check everything I've said. Show them the tapes, Kob. 
Dude, this is one of the best promoted fights I have seen in a long time, in part because Showtime is doing their thing. Wilder and Fury have done a metric ton of media. We had uh, Wilder in studio. Fury duffed on us, but whatever. Did he really? Well, he, he duffed on all of Sirius XM. Okay. So, so I don't he didn't take, single, uh, yeah. He's a great guy. And Wilder did my show, didn't do DJ Woo Kid, so thank you, Wilder. Hey-o. At any event, they've done a, a ridiculous amount. Yesterday, you had the guy taking his shirt off. The whole thing. This is an incredible fight that has been, I think, fabulously. And promoted. how many fighters have you interviewed? Millions. How yes. good is Deontay Wilder? He's amazing. And I, I was just talking uh, the, this morning while I was doing press. I don't understand how he's not a bigger star. He checks every box when you think about it. Why is it, do you think? If you have a theory, there must be something holding him back. Is it just boxing in general? Like uh, just uh, the American population doesn't care in general? Even though he's 40-0, 39 knockouts, he speaks well, he's articulate, he looks the part, knocks everybody out. Family I, man? Great family man. Yeah. Personality. You know, Canelo's obviously the biggest star. It's, it's everyone, you know, name the biggest American star. He's probably the biggest American star. Yeah. I think my only issue is he. everybody he beats are like, well... That guy's good, but like fatally flawed. Yeah, but Mike Tyson never really beat anyone. He lost to all the the tough guys that he fought. Yeah, but Deontay got into the sport by the age where Tyson was champ. Twenty four. No, I think Tyson was champ at twenty two. So like Tyson that, you know, was tw- uh, twenty two when he yeah. was champ. I think I think uh, Wilder got in late, like twenty four. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying he had. I see what you're saying. Tyson had this like uh, aura about him, like oh, this yeah. is the next next big thing. Wilder's had to like manually turn heads to get people to look at him. And I think finally this might be that event if he can really sort of get I over I think the this is the event. If he, if he can get past Fury, which is a big if, but if he can get by Fury, then Joshua's there waiting for him. Now, are you going to be at the fights? It's in L.A. Dude, I'm, I'm doing stand-up, so this is how it works. Oh, that's right. Over the this weekend, is why yeah. Showtime's like, hold on, you can't work the fight? You're doing all the press for us Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have came here anyways. I'm not just saying that. but um, So usually I, I would work this fight, and I've worked with for the build-up and everything. Thing, but I'm getting ready to shoot my one hour comedy special showtime in January. So we booked these comedy dates out months and months in advance. This fight came together very quickly. So it's just bad timing. I'm, I'm in Gotham uh, Comedy Club this weekend. What so are the, what are the shows it. there? Uh, two shows Friday, three shows Saturday. Uh, both shows on Saturday sold out. So they just added a later show. A fourth? Uh, well, a third. A third. Oh, so yeah. two. Okay. Two, so it's two and yeah. two. So you just do two a night. Three is a little crazy. So what we'll time is the first goes. show? First show, I think, is at 7, then there's a 9, then 11.45. But that 11.45 crowd is going to be lit. It's going to be lit. Uh, we'll see <laughs> the how The two-drink minimum will be not be an issue. That's right. And I, I, I text my boys, you know, I go, hey, has anyone done a third show in New York? Everyone's like, don't do it. But I need the reps to get ready for this special, so I, I I'm going to deal with the with the mayhem. We'll get to that in just a second. Yeah. Let me circle back to the fight if yeah, we can. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, you've interviewed Deontay a number of times. I've seen him. Yeah. One was here. I, I saw that one. No one on a bus. What's your interaction with Fury been like? Uh, great guy. Yeah. Me, me and him would text each other. What you know? Would would DM each other on funny things. Uh, he is um, one of my favorite fighters, if not my favorite fighter. But if I even met him or started working with him, I've just been a fan of his for a long time. I I think the sport needs him, especially at heavyweight. Uh, he, he's a good voice for the sport. He's so articulate on the mic. If there's anyone who's going to get into comedy and stand up after fighting, it's gonna be that guy. If he wanted to, he could do it. He is he is very witty, fast on his feet, and I, I just think he's good for the sport. And with me, uh, Showtime was like, hey, he's training Big Bear, so we're going to pick you up at 5 a.m. and uh, drive you up to Big Bear to meet with him at 7. You have breakfast. You go through his whole training camp. If you want to run the road work with him, like, cool. I love this. Let's do it, man. So I wake up at 5 a.m., and I we drive all the way up to Big Bear. And the guys are on the team, the the all access team, like, dude, we can't get a hold of him. We don't know where he's at. And I'm I get a little frustrated. Like, I'm not your typical, like, I'm not your a journalist or a guy who's looking to break a story. Like, this is fun for me, but I don't have to do it. I just want I just want to have fun and get to know these guys and do a great job for Showtime. But if someone's not on time or, or, or they're disrespecting time, I get pretty frustrated. So we get up there. I'm like, all right, I'm out of here, man. He's not here. I'm out of here. Like, no, no, just wait. And I'm like, what is going on here, man? And then I, I guess he was just kind of a little bit bothered with all the cameras and a few guys on the team. He didn't want to be around them. And then once his brother uh, found out it was me, I get a text and he's like, dude, we're actually in Riverside today. We just don't want to tell anybody. How far apart is that? It's about an hour, hour and change. 
So we had to pack up all our other stuff, head down there. And that's where you see the part where I go, when you're chasing a gypsy, you don't know where you're going to end up. Oh, We're at the most Mexican right, right, right. gym of all time. Yeah. And he's like in this little uh, Mexican gym, man, just doing work. And it was it was a fun time. It was a great time, man. What do you make of the, uh, we, we've all heard the story about the depths of uh, despair he fell into and how it's a comeback. And I believe it's a comeback, right? Mental it, it, health. Got it. Yeah. But my thing is this, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, is there a tax to pay more than just the process of the rehabilitation itself? In other words, do you expect him to be the exact same fighter or better than the one he was against Klitschko? Because to me, it's like, mm. man, to go that heavy and then to come this far back, you you lost some. I, I don't know this. My my concerns maybe there's something that was lost in there. Yeah, I'm the same. Uh, I, I agree with you. I, I think. You know, did you see the two warm up fights he had where you yeah. know, those two guys could walk in right now? We'd have no idea they're fighters. Yeah. So um, he had those kind of warm up fights. As great of a story this is, and be a great storybook ending if you were to beat Deontay Wilder, it, I feel like it's too much, man. It's just too much. Really? I, I, I feel like Deontay Wilder is just, he's too big of a puncher. He's been active. He just beat Ortiz. It's a tough fight for Fury, man. You know, Very had, tough fight. You know, uh, Jerry Cooney, we had him. He does the boxing show here, Gentleman Jerry Cooney. And uh, we, he's a big boy. We asked him uh, as you know, as a heavyweight, what did you make of it? Because the odds, I think Fury is the favorite. So Slight I'm favorite, thinking. yeah. And I was like, uh, he's like, who do you think? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't know, probably Fury, just because with the. I mean, I'm a, let me be clear, I'm a Wilder fan. I really like him, but just I, I, I don't know. So I'm just going to side with the favorite. And he was like, no, 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 it's going to be Wilder. I was like, why do you think? One was that reason. He's like, to go that heavy and then to come back, it's, it's you, you can't take everything back with you. The second one was, I wonder what you make of this. He's like, the better mover is going to be Fury. But Fury doesn't box with up here. He boxes down here. Correct. And so even if he's the better boxer and mover, I mean, one or two of those of bombs, time. when Wilder lands those, it's going to close the show. Yeah, you're, he's 100% correct there. So I think early on this fight goes down. The the first time you get a, a view of Fury when you're fighting inside that that uh, ring, you're you've never seen that before. You can't bring in a training partner partner to mimic that. You can't do any of that. So it's going to take Deontay Wilder a few rounds to get used to this movement, the elusiveness of of uh, Fury, and he's going to go down on the scorecards. I think probably the first four to five he's going to be down, three to one, four to one, something like that. And I think Fury fans are going to be all ecstatic. And then as the rounds go on, Wilder's going to find that timing. He's going to see an opening and capitalize on it. I hmm. think he I think he knocks him out 10 through 12. 877-FIGHT-93, 877-344-4893. Let's do this. Let's go to break. We come back. Let's talk more about your podcast, your stand-up, and a whole lot more. Sound good? It, man. Brendan Schaub in studio right here on the Luke Thomas Show. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel. There's other videos you can watch right here. If you've never heard my Sirius XM radio show, there's a link in the description box below. You can try it for free for 30 days. The Luke Thomas Show airs weekdays, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Fight Nation, Channel 93. Catch you all next time.